Hello everyone. This is Alex of Venom Machine Support. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a selection membrane into a Dixie Narco 501E, 276E, or 600E drink vending machine. Now this was a suggestion by a viewer who left a comment in the comment sections about how to install these selection membranes. I believe they were having an issue reassembling this assembly, which is not too difficult, but it can get confusing if it's the first time you've ever done something like this. So with that in mind, if you find this video useful, please make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any comments or ideas of videos that you would like to see, leave a comment below. With that being said, let's get started. Now the Dixie Narco E-Series drink vending machine had two styles of switches that they would use. In the first generations, it would be an actual mechanical switch such as this cherry switch here. You would have nine of these in a Dixie Narco 501E or 600E and seven of these in a Dixie Narco 276E. If you had a selection switch that went down that actually was an actual the switch that was bad, you would just take the switch out, put the new one in. Now the later model uh, series of the machines, they switched over to a selection membrane. Now this is a Dixonarco 501E or 600E selection membrane because there's nine contact points that the switches would actually actuate against. If you had one of these that failed, you would have to replace the entire assembly. Now there is a selection switch test found underneath the diagnostics menu on these S2D control boards on these E-series drink vending machines. But the only problem with this is Selection buttons one and two have to work in order for you to get to this test, to perform this test. A Little bit silly, but that's another story for another time. But to get to that, first thing we gotta do, we gotta make sure selection buttons one and two work. So you can always press the blue service mode button on the control board. And then you're gonna be presented with HD on the display. Now this is where we can figure out if selection buttons one and two work or not. If you press and hold selection buttons one and two, you should start advancing forward in the display. So HD stands for historical data. If I was to press but just button one, a number should come up. Same thing goes with selection button two. It's gonna report back a number and that number should be different than what is number one. So if you're pressing selection buttons one and two and it's coming up with a number, then you're not either pressing either selection buttons one or two together hard enough or you've got a non-functioning selection button one or selection button two. So you can see how this gets a little bit aggravating when you're trying to figure out if your selection buttons work or not. But luckily these selection buttons do work on this machine so I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the diagnostics area. So I press and hold selection buttons one and two until I get to DIAG on the display, short for diagnostics. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and press selection button one to enter diagnostics until the display reads SE. Now this is our selection switch test. So if I press selection button one, a one should come up in the display. Same thing if I press selection button two, a two should be a come up in the display. So if I continue on down hitting three and now there's four five six seven eight okay nine I'm pressing nine but nothing's coming up on the display so we know that selection button nine doesn't work so I definitely have to change out that selection assembly so to do that, we're just going to need to get it to the inside of the door here. And we're going to start working over here on the left-hand side behind where the coin changer is mounted. So let me go ahead and get the camera readjusted and set up for that so you can see how that's done. In order to get to the selection switch membrane, you are going to have to get behind the coin changer here. So you can leave your coin changer in, but usually on these Dixon Arcos, there's either going to be a, a little metal tab right here or a metal uh, black rubber strap that you push this way to actually fold open or swing open this actual door assembly, exposing the back sides of the buttons here. So on here, we can see that this is the actual metal plate we're going to have to leave, or actually remove, excuse me. You're going to have these 11 32nd nuts along the way that you're gonna to have to remove to get off, to get this, this bracket off or this plate off. And then you, it, actually what you have here is behind this is the actual selection switch membrane and the rubber actuator, which acts as kind of like a spring. So you're gonna need your 11 32nd nut driver or socket to remove these. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that now. I'm gonna start from the bottom here and start working my way up on these. Up here you've got this one nut, kind of offset nut up here. Um, it's hard to see even the video, but this is kind of, a kind of holds the cable uh, in place. So I'm just going to ahead and remove that. 
if I can get my fingers on it. So that's gonna remove the cable. And then we got one more, it's kind of tucked underneath here. So you kind of see it right there. So this one is tucked right here. So make sure I don't get my fat head in the way. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that real quick. All right, so we got this assembly. So I'm going to slowly pull this out. So here's that metal bracket. All right, that is the um, assembly for it. So we're we'll going to set that aside. And now you can actually see the back of the actual selection membrane right here. So this is the actual membrane right here. So this is actually an older one because it's, uh, it's clear. Usually those are the older style. And we're just going to disconnect it here. Now there is a, there is a, there's a little clamp right here. If you press down on this, and then work your, work your way loose, it comes disconnected. So this actually plugs into here like that, and that would be connected, and that's disconnected. So this is the actual old assembly. Go ahead and set that aside. Now what we have remaining here is, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of tuck this out of the way so you can see what we're talking about here. Now what we got here is this rubber strip, and this is where I've seen most people get confused when they're doing it. That's when I've taught other uh, mechanics how to actually fix this, is that they'll get these in backwards or up and down. So this is just a little rubber piece here, and it comes in two parts. All right, so the, actually, the person who actually worked on this at one point, and I'll do it so I don't lose a little spacers, they've actually numbered this. So that actually, so this was a good mechanic because usually whenever you do something as a mechanic and you do something, it's always good to always leave it for the next person. So the next guy that has to come work on the machine and kind of get an idea of what you did. But this one labeled this one the one. You can barely see it, but they put a one right here, meaning this would probably be the top. And then they did a two there to let them know that this will be the bottom. But if you don't do that and you forget, if you look at these little rubber contact points, so there's two sides here. So we got this side here, and what we're really focusing on is this little bit right here. And then we've got this side. So this side always faces the buttons. This here makes a little, if you can just see, see it in the camera, there's a little hard rubber piece here that when the button is pressed, like that, this presses up against the contact points on the selection switch membrane. So this would have to face the selection switch membrane. This bigger part faces the actual selection button. As a matter of fact, on the back of the selection button, there's actually a raised area. Um, so you kind of get a light here. This little area right here is the area that makes connection to this. So these go on like that. So let me go ahead and put this back in here. Now, another thing to pay attention to is there are spacers on all the studs. There are these little spacers right here. So don't forget, don't lose these. Uh, when you're taking it off, if you're very careful and gentle, you can take everything off one at a time, but don't lose these spacers because these hold the, uh, the whole assembly off of the button just enough so that when the press selection button gets pushed in, it's making the, cor the correct actuation point or whatever. No, it's not scientific. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this in here, all right, so it's connected. So what I'm gonna do is I can now actuate each individual one to check to make sure that it actually is functioning. So what I'm going to actuate is these little circles right here are the contact points, okay? And so, there, so you would do is you would squeeze them like that. So you just take your, your thumb and your next finger and you squeeze these contact points. You know, one at a time, you can actually sequence. So we do one and two, which is right here. I could then now cycle the menu by holding these two, these two together. So we go ahead and put the control board into test end mode or into the uh, selection switch mode by pressing the blue mode button. All right, and I have HD. So I'm just going to squeeze these two here while I'm looking around at the front here. And I'm gonna cycle until I get to DIAG. All right, so I'm at DIAG. I press and hold selection switch one, which is this one right here. I'm at SE. Now I'm just gonna go through and individually press each individual contact point, making sure that I could see it on the front of the display. So I press one, there's one, 
there's two, there's three, four, that's five, six, seven, that's eight, and the last one here at the bottom is nine. Okay, that comes up great. All right, so here I'm making sure that it works before I reassemble everything. Basically, spending that little bit of extra time there is going to uh, start a lot of frustration to test it and you get it all reassembled and it still doesn't work. So it doesn't hurt just to make that little extra effort to make sure everything is working before you reassemble everything. Just so I can go ahead and get these lined up. So these are gonna go in here like this. All right, there's one, let's have this over here. And if I got that, I'm gonna go put the second strip in. Then I'm, again, I'm just hanging these on here. So you got to be just, you gotta be a little graceful when you do this. I know my head's getting in the way here. Okay. And I did that one backwards. Let me go ahead and disconnect this because this is really getting, just getting in my way. All right. So let me go ahead and take this off. There we go. Had this backwards. Okay. So everything's connected up here. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in the membrane. And I'm going to go ahead and connect this up. So we go ahead and we hang this one up here. Next, we're going to flip it around the other way. So this is not a very elegant way of doing this. I'm also doing it from a different, different angle. I'm going to go ahead and put the metal bracket back on. I'm going to line, line it up on the top. Put that in here. Get this out from underneath it. And everything is all set. So here, I can just start taking to putting the nuts on. So I always like to hand tighten these. We'll get a few on here, here first, and then we'll get them down nice and tight. So we're just going to put one on here. So it's going to give us, going to act as our little way that we can work. All right, so that's there. On to the next one. I'm just going to put these on finger tight. Okay, the one that's kind of hidden up here a little bit. Up here at the top. Get that in. All right. It's all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get my 11 30 second nut driver. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these down. So I'm just gonna get not be typing them all the way down just yet. This one here, to the top one. So kind of like when you're doing a car, putting a tire on a car, I kind of go up, down, down, up, and then work my way towards the center. Go ahead and close this back up. Make sure the cable doesn't get stuck under the delivery chute. And I'll latch that back into place here. And then now we can go back up and do our uh, selection switch test to make sure everything's working. Now that I got the selection switch back into the machine and connected, now is the time to make the final test and make sure the new slumber that I put all together, everything is working as it should be. So we're going to go back into that selection switch test underneath the diagnostics menu. So I'm gonna press the blue service mode button on the control board. We should have HD on the display. Now I'm gonna press selection buttons one and two together at the same time until I get to DIAG. There we are, DIAG for diagnostics. And I press and hold selection button one to enter that. And then here I'm gonna go ahead and press each individual selection button, and make sure their corresponding number shows up in the display. So I press one, then we got one. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So everything is working. 
Now you can see how easy it is actually is to install that selection switch membrane. And just a quick overview, I showed you how to test to make sure your selection switches are working and how by going under diagnostics and going into the selection switch test and then out to how to remove the assembly and reattach it. Now if you found this video useful, I appreciate if you could like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas of videos that you would like to see, such as this one, uh, please leave a comment below and I'm happy to help where I can. Now with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.